Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, and we are here in the studio today with two of my favorite people, uh, the authors of the Regional Strategic Plan for Health and Wellness Travel, uh, Stowe Shoemaker, Dr. Stowe Shoemaker, and Cheryl Smith from the LVCVA. For those of you that are new to the show, uh, we broadcast live here in the studio every Friday morning at 10 o'clock, and we try to bring in the movers and the shakers of healthcare, those in the know, those that are doing great things, those that are seeing patients from out of market, and today, those that were the authors that wrote the strategic plan that are making all of this happen. Welcome to the studio. It's great to be here, Doug. Thank you. We appreciate it. And it seems like a long time since we last saw each other. Uh, Just last night, I think we were up on stage for about an hour and a half talking about the same thing we're going to chat about today. Yes, exactly. Uh, and on top of that, I think uh, every every Wednesday morning for about the last four years, we've become mm-hmm. good friends hanging out at the Coffee Bean. So <laughs> thank you all for that. <laughs> it's, been, it's been really an honor and really fun. Yeah, I think we're doing some good things. So just to give the, 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 the user audience, those that are watching us today, a little background as to how we got here. I'm just going to cover real quick because this whole notion of medical tourism, I want to talk about why that's a bad term later on uh, and why we're, we've changed that to health and wellness travel. But I want to go back in time and where all this started. And let's rewind the clock a little bit to January of 2012. A small group of us, and I don't think the two of you were, uh, still, you were still living in uh, Houston, Houston at the time. Yes. Cheryl, you were just probably getting ready to onboard with the LVCVA, but a uh, yep. small group of us got together at Oscar's Restaurant. So, Scott, if you could pull up a, a little shot of Oscar's. Many people know our mayor of the city of Las Vegas, Oscar Goodman. He'll tell you he coined the word medical tourism. He's the one that really made a lot of this happen. So we we brought the our group down to Oscar's Restaurant to chat a little bit about medical tourism. And in that group... We had folks from every area of Las Vegas. It wasn't just healthcare. It wasn't just hospitality. We we did have the CEOs from various casinos, CEOs of hospitals, deans of med schools, but a panel. And it was really, can we make this a real journey? Is this something that the entire community would get behind? Uh, and we discovered, yes, they would. Uh, and what started all was this little book, Scott. If I, I'm going to hold this up, if we could kind of take a look at this guy, it's a it's a book that uh, was published by the LVCVA, and this made everything real. Uh, it uh, was a piece of collateral that said we're serious about this. We're going to really, yeah. So we're going to really start. Uh, making this a, a, a real conversation. But anyway, that escalated from here to we put together a panel discussion. Uh, and if we could pull up the panel discussion, this was over at UNLV. And uh, on that panel, we had doctors that were either doing medical, seeing medical travelers, uh, or those that were prepared to do it. So we had experts in the field of oncology, fertility, bariatrics, orthopedics, um executive physicals, and even dental health. And so what happened here is everybody started realizing, gosh, we've got some centers of excellence here in town. And then from after that, we um, that's when the two of you, we all met. And we started meeting a lot. So <laughs> yes, let's, let's, let's start talking. How did that process come about? And talk to us about some of the, the aha moments that you all discovered along the way. Well, I think um, I'll talk first, Cheryl. I think what was exciting, and, and we've put together a whole strategic plan that is available online, and we'll give you information on how to find that. But when you think about, when, we, when you read the strategic plan, what you'll really notice is it really focuses on three kinds of areas, a lot to do with capacity, a lot to do with community and, and, and collaboration. And, and the whole idea really was, was looking at, well, what is our capacity? If we, if we have all these medical tourists coming to town, how can we take care of them when the perception is, is that Las Vegas can't even take care of their own? And we'll, we'll address, we address that very, very quickly in the strategic plan, and Cheryl, you'll mm-hmm. talk about that in sure. a minute. But the other thing that we really found is, is you'll th- see throughout the report is that it was really a lot of collaboration. Yeah. This was not just three of us meeting at the Coffee Bean, coming up with a strategic plan, but it was really, we had numerous focus groups at UNLV within the community. We talked to doctors. We talked to pretty much everybody in town who had an interest in this whole area and received lots and lots of feedback. And that's what I think is so exciting about the plan is it really was organic, not coming down from the top, but organic and development. We had about 100, I think it was 147. Scott, if you could pull up, we've got a slide of all of the contributors. And I think that really is a, a testament to those that were involved. And Cheryl, talk to us a little bit about the, the diversity that you see here. Well, I, you're absolutely right. It is a, a very diverse group of, of 
individuals as well as organizations from across the entire region. Um, and it, it may be difficult for everyone to see the, the actual list of all those names, but really what's there is a collaboration between um, all the major and small healthcare organizations, individual physicians, um, our hospitality industry, as well as our economic development agencies, um, uh, uh, Las Vegas Global Economic Alliance and uh, the Governor's Office of Economic Development. Um, but we also have a lot of other businesses um, in the private sector who support either the hospitality or the healthcare industry that really came together to help um, have a discussion at a community level. And, you know, Stowe, you're very right when, when you say that this uh, whole entire concept emerged very organically. There really was no original plan for this. When, when all these entities came together, it really was to share what they were either currently doing or ideas for what they wanted to do. Um, and it became a, just an incredibly big, massive brainstorming um, opportunity. And, and as a result, from that um, is really what was the basis for the original strategic plan um, that debuted about two years ago. Um, because it highlighted six areas, and, and still maybe you can highlight those for us, there were six recommendations that really evolved from that, um, that everyone was able to kind of, um, I guess, join together around and, and kind of form some ideas. Yeah, we'll touch on those six. I want to, I want to emphasize something, mm -hmm. though, and that is, you know, if you think Las Vegas, it, it's a hospitality town. It, we were built around the casino being the, the heartbeat of everything. And, and Dr. Shoemaker, your school, uh, the hotel school, is what built that. You, you provide that leadership. And I think what everybody realized is that is the key economic driver. Uh, it's not just that industry, but that's what feeds the entire community. And healthcare really came together to say, how do we prop the healthcare industry up with the hospitality industry to create this thing called medical tourism, which, again, we don't like that word, but... Uh, Dr. Shoemaker, share with us some of these uh, the recommendations after you, you, you share a few words. Yeah, so I think you're absolutely correct. And, and one of the things that gives Las Vegas such an incredible competitive advantage is when you think about health and wellness travel, and when we think about what's happening in healthcare today, everything is all related to the patient experience, the patient satisfaction. And many organizations are really saying, okay, how do we make patients feel like loved family members? And so they're going out and they're trying to find all that information and how to do it. And when we look at Las Vegas, we are hospitality. As a city, we know how to create great experiences. And I think this is really what, what is the emphasis for our whole strategic plan is we have the hospitality part together. Now let's just figure out how do we tie all that in because it does give us such a competitive advantage in terms of where we want to go. And when we, when we developed in the first two years ago, kind of the six areas that we looked at were really health and wellness meetings along with education. We talked about medical tourism, which was kind of the subset of health and wellness travel. We looked at spa and wellness tourism. We looked at wellness travel agents and medical facilitators because they're the people who actually bring you know, patients to a, a destination. We also looked at this whole issue of packaging and the bundling of services, which is so critical in terms of payments. And when we look at, you know, Las Vegas, we understand bundling. Yeah, That's what we better than anybody, <clears throat> better than anybody. And then the other issue was really this whole area of clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And and when we talk about clinical trials, the critical issue is how do we get a diverse population? Yeah. And, and if you've ever, when you're in Las Vegas, if you ever go through the MGM or some of the casinos, you always see the major networks that test all their TV shows here in Las Vegas because they have that diversity of population. Absolutely. And we take that same thing and apply it to clinical trials. It's really exciting. So those were our six realistic goals that we thought we could focus on. And we ran it. We, you know, let's be honest with, with ourselves. When we were writing this plan, we ran into some, some challenges, some aha moments of, wow, we've got a fix a few things if we really want this to succeed. And I think those were wrapped around capacity. They're wrapped around connections. And talk to capacity-wise. Cheryl, you're from the LVCVA, so you manage the brand of Las Vegas, and you're responsible for people coming here. Tell us a little bit about the populations that come here, the volumes, and how many people, and why that's important to this plan. Well, just last year alone, we had over 42 million visitors that pass through our city. And that's a combination of both leisure travelers as well as um, conference and um, uh, trade show delegates. Um, but when, we, when you think about visitors and people who are traveling to a destination for medical care, you know, I can remember us having the conversation, the what if conversation. What if a plane 
an airplane filled with with medical travelers were to arrive at McCarran Airport, all expecting to have medical yeah. procedures done that day. Could our medical system, could our health care, local health care economy actually be able to service that volume of population it, and at a moment's notice, in addition to servicing the local community, as well as the visitors who are already here um, who might require some emerging health care. So it, it obviously that's not the situation. That's not what happens every day. But it was a what if scenario that caused us all to really sit back and kind of think, you know, about our capacity. And, and if we really pursued the development of medical tourism the way we originally were thinking about it, would it overwhelm our local delivery, uh, healthcare delivery system in total? And um, that's a conversation that I remember we shared with a lot of the uh, other hospitals and other medical providers in the community. And we talked to a lot of physicians and um, certainly all the hospital administrators, as well as the um, healthcare academics in our community as well. Um, and from that, we really learned a lot, um, including we needed some more capacity. We needed to build some infrastructure. We also needed to essentially course correct some things in, in our local um, health care delivery system, as well as in the, on the hospitality side, who could service medical travelers. So we started to get into that foundational, uh, what do we need to do at the foundational level before we could really build upon marketing and advertising? And, um, you know, some things that, that I'd like to maybe touch on um, that, frankly, we didn't necessarily have a direct hand in, but um, certainly the Governor's Office of Economic Development and the LVGEA were instrumental in helping, uh, I think, all of us come together. Um, graduate medical education, you know, we discovered Gigantic. that. Absolutely. If we discovered if, you know, we're going to really actively promote the destination for health and wellness travel, we needed more medical providers. We need more doctors. Well, how, where do you get those from? You know, yeah. where do they come from? You know, and UNLV is building a school of medicine, right? We are. It's very exciting. We're going to start classes in 2017. Mm -hmm. So that's a pipeline of new doctors that will be coming mm -hmm. out, but they wouldn't have a place to uh, do the residency if it weren't for GME expansion and the great uh, partnership that we've built up with the folks over at the Governor's Office right. of Economic Development that uh, provided funding to expand that. And I, I want to stay on that subject mm -hmm. for a little bit because there's something else that's really important, and that is, uh, so we've got not only UNLV coming out of the ground, but we have Roseman uh, School of Medicine coming out of the ground to add on to uh, Toro. And uh, we've got the ability to train a whole new cadre of doctors around this whole thing called hospitality and healthcare because we could bring that into the early curriculum. So it's born into that training model. And so you all just received a grant. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? It's pretty yeah, this cool. Is, this is actually very, very exciting. Um, United Health gave UNLV and the medical school uh, about a $3 million grant to really look at hospitality and healthcare and all of that related to how do we train the future doctors. So some of that money has come to the hospitality program. And we're working very closely with the medical school, one, on helping them with curriculum to talk about the patient-doctor relationship, but also to talk about the whole process. As UNLV begins to take over some of the clinics um, from, from UNR Medical School, we're really beginning to look at well, how should those clinics be designed? How do we create in hospitality? We talk a lot about the service gate, the atmospherics, the design, the layout. How do we change that to improve all the patient flow? Sure. So, so unlike most medical schools that are very traditional, because we're a brand new school, we're putting this hospitality curriculum right in early on to all the doctors. And this is what we think is so exciting. And you've got a conference coming up in November, I believe. And talk to us a little bit about that. So this is our second annual conference on hospitality and healthcare. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is, is that, you know, as, as we look, as hospitals look more to improve the patient experience, to make the patient feel like a loved family member, the real question is, well, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Right. What are some of the lessons that we've learned in hospitality that can be translated into healthcare? Yeah. What are some theoretical frameworks that we use all the time in 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 hosp in health in hospitality? How can we then use that in healthcare? Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, is that healthcare also does some amazing things. And so the idea is not for us in hospitality to tell healthcare how to do things, but let's get a group of people on both sides of the of the fence to sort of say, okay, what are the things we're doing that creates a great experience, and how do we learn from each other? Yep. So we're very excited about this conference. Last, the first annual conference, we had probably almost like 200 people. Wow. And and we're looking even for a bigger this year. 
That's great. So, and you know, it, again, this is a form of collaboration. It's bringing Very two industries so. together. And this is really part of the first recommendation in this, and that's medical meetings. Although this yes. is geared more towards the local, we along the way we discovered we've got this great set of assets in Las Vegas of this meeting space. So, Cheryl, your group, you're responsible for filling all this meeting space. Tell us a little bit about medical meetings, how that fits into the plan, and some of the stuff that you've been working on over the last two years to really optimize that more. Well, of all the meetings, conventions, and trade shows that come to Las Vegas, a significant number of them are healthcare related. They're either professional associations or they could be corporate meetings, um, but there's some sort of continuing medical education that is associated with all of those, almost all of those. And what we discovered was that there was an opportunity um, to actually share the volume and the individual conferences that were coming here and share that information through Las Vegas Heals, actually, and through uh, your newsletter um, with our local medical community and, and our local providers. There's no reason why our local medical community can't take advantage of, of participating in many of those conferences that pass right through our city. Um, but similarly, um, for the meeting planners themselves, for what we call our clients, um, it becomes a value-added service for them to be able to share their conference with an expanded audience in the city that they're hosting their meeting in. Um, but from that, there's a, you know been plenty of other takeaways that we've been able to discover is that, um, you know, aside from the actual continuing education meetings that come here, there's other types of health industry-related shows. Um, and many of them are support the healthcare insurance industry. They support the, the healthcare payer market um, and provides so buyers other of opportunities. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and provides additional yeah. opportunities that our local providers who are interested in learning or uh, discovering new markets or promoting their medical travel services, it gives them another, another channel um, through which to be able to promote what they do and to market what they do. How many of these business delegates come here every year? Oh, there's tens of thousands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, 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 know, I've heard specific... the number of like six million business yes. delegates yes. come here for meetings and they're potential patients. As well, because sure. they're coming here regularly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, ironically, I can I can tell you that uh, uh, there's actually a couple of dentists in town, um, in particular, that um, see many people who come here to participate in, in a non healthcare related show, but they participate in magic. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a fashion industry trade show. And uh, uh, these business delegates come here for their dental appointments because they are on the road so much traveling for their own uh, business purposes. They don't know where, when they're going to be back home for their dental visit, but ironically, they know exactly when they're going to be in Las Vegas yep. twice a year. It's nice to tie your executive health yes. to that. So yeah. let's, let's move on because we've got a, a short program here. I want to talk about another area that we found in the plan is traditional medical tourism. So let's do two things with this one. Let's first... Why is this plan different than medical tourism? Mm -hmm. And what did you all classify as this medical tourism part of this plan? I know it's a little bit contradictory, but. Well, so, you know, when, we, when the traditional view of medical tourism, what we found in doing all the, all the mm -hmm. research before we actually started, you know, doing all the focus groups was everybody thought about medical tourism as going to a destination because it was cheaper. Mm -hmm. You could find, you know, get a heart transplant cheaper in some country than you could in your own town. And so the big emphasis on medical tourism was go find the cheapest place, lowest cost producer for, for medical tourism. And we realized pretty early on that that, that was not our, our model, that we could never be the lowest cost producer. Nor and, should we. Or nor should we be the lowest cost producer. And I think that the, the thing that really was so surprising for me, you know, having moved back to Las Vegas and... And, and the perception that we didn't have expertise in healthcare in Las Vegas. But when we started to look at, at medical tourism, people coming here for procedures, and one of the big markets that we found was that people in Canada, yeah, because of the accessibility, it takes so long to get procedures. And one, one thing we noticed was with, with in Canada, they don't allow PET scans because they don't think they're worthwhile. And we realized that we have all these flights coming into Las Vegas, we have all this capacity for for, you know, for imaging, that seemed to be a logical path. And then as we began to look into it, what I really realized was what great healthcare we actually do have here in Las Vegas. And Cheryl, I know that you pointed out a lot of things when we think about medical tourism, what are some of the procedures we're great at? Mm -hmm. And 
we found that there's actually quite a few happening here already. Let's rattle through those, because those that aren't, that are new to the group or this is the first time hearing it, what are those areas that we've got centers of excellence? Sure. Um, well, a few of them that come to mind, and please help me out because this is a long list, <laughs> but we have uh, infertility and reproductive medicine, um, orthopedic surgery, bariatric, weight loss surgery, uh, cardiology, mm -hmm. neurosurgery, uh, dental, age management medicine. Can't forget the beloved Cleveland Clinic and Absolutely. brain health. Brain health. Absolutely. And our and oncology, oncology group. Yeah, yes. our oncology, oncology group, which is part of clinical trials that we'll touch on a little bit later. But uh, we've got these centers of excellence that are bringing patients in each and every day from all around the country that are flying here for mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and that's it's exciting and it, it's great for Las Vegas. But it's great for all our, our people who practice in this area because what it does is it gives, especially when you think about clinical trials mm -hmm. and we look at um, what's happening with comprehensive cancer. We do have so many different visitors coming here. And as, as Cheryl mentioned earlier, maybe it was you, Doug, when we're traveling on va business, we always mm -hmm. seem to have time to get things done that we don't in our regular yes, life. Yes, we do. And, and it becomes a natural thing to plan your dental around when you when you're coming to a meeting because the meetings are fixed and it's easy to do that and yep. and because we have so we have such incredible accessibility to Las Vegas when you look at all the flights that come in from all around the country and around the world into Las Vegas it really makes it so that this idea of, of people coming to Las Vegas for a certain procedure it suddenly makes a lot more sense when you look at the the accessibility to getting into Vegas and getting out of Vegas yeah and then even after your procedure, you know, one of the things that made, you know, we well often joke about what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But with medical procedures, that's often something people don't want to know that they went to have mm -hmm. teeth it's whitening. It's a private matter. It's a private matter. Well, it actually, that mm -hmm. even reminds me, one of the areas of specialty that we kind of missed in the, in the list was plastic surgery yeah. and cosmetic right. surgery. We know how to keep our population <laughs> looking good in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> so I want to move on because... Uh, uh, Again, I wanted to feud the, we don't like this word medical tourism. We went with health and wellness yes. travel. Cheryl, tell us about the wellness part. Why is that important and why was that brought into the plan? Well, it was brought into the plan because, uh, quite frankly, we discovered, or, well, hospitality already knew this, um, but the medical community may, wasn't necessarily as aware of the number of spas that we have in Las Vegas. And we have um, 45 resort model yeah. spas in approximately a five-mile um piece of land. And that's a lot of capacity. It's, it's enormous capacity. capacity. Um, they have the capability to uh, literally service thousands of patients or, or guests mm -hmm. um, on a consistent basis every day, um, which is enormous. And what that really, I guess, sparked was this concept of really looking more closely at what services are they providing. Um, and while none of the resort model spas that we have in Las Vegas do any invasive procedures, they are providing a lot of educational services and relaxation services that are close Closely connected to many medical procedures. So it opened up a lot of opportunity to really explore who exactly is a wellness traveler. And there really is no specific demographic for that. Um, it's the three of us. It's, you know, younger people, older people, baby boomers, millennials, um, it, it, all nationalities from around the world. Um, and that caused us to really think about this expanded definition of what wellness is. And, and I think the conclusion we've come to is it's really the experiences or the, the guest experience, the patient experience, anything that contributes to one's overall well-being. And that's it, a very broad definition. Yeah. And I think a good example of that is you look at what's what's happening at MGM, where they've created these mm -hmm. wellness suites. Yep. So people are actually coming to Las Vegas. They're paying additional money for a room that has a citrus and few shower head, mm -hmm. that it has ambient lighting that keeps your melatonin in, mm -hmm. that has all the thing white noise, all the things that mm -hmm. create great wellness. And now they're moving into um, wellness meetings that have the same things in the meeting room. So there's a huge trend to being healthy, to, to leading a good, healthy lifestyle. So is the wellness marketplace bigger than medical? Significantly, yes. And so in Las Vegas, we've got 45 spas. That's probably higher density of spas than anywhere else in the world. Well, and, and you have to think, too, in terms of why people travel for wellness and well-being. Um, when you think of Las Vegas, you have to remember the number of marathons that we host here. These are healthy yeah. travelers who are coming here to participate in marathons, uh, rock and roll marathon, Tough Mudder, Iron Man, Iron Woman. Um, these are huge opportunities, and these are healthy people who live wellness lifestyles. But we also are surrounded by national parkland, which gives us 
you know, the opportunity, our guests, the opportunity to go hiking and biking and explore the outdoors. These are also wellness travelers. And, you know, I often joke about the, the um, connection between outdoor space and relaxation services as the, the rough it experiences and then the buff it experiences. <laughs> but, so obviously there's a lot of yes. medical travel agents or wellness travel agents yes. that handle all that. And we're, that's part of this plan. And we're going we're gonna to breeze through that a little bit just because there's people that coordinate to bring those folks here. And they're bringing in, you know, the marathon drew in thousands and thousands of people. So that's happening. But on the, on, let's get back to the medical procedure side. There's this thing called bundled services or this global payment model. Why is that important to medical travel? And what are we doing here in Las Vegas that's unique? I think when, when I'll, I'll jump in on this one. Yeah. I think when, you know, when consumers think about buying any sort of product, there's a set price. But healthcare gets a little more complicated in that respect. And so when people are looking to travel for medical care, they want to know, well, what is the total cost? How much is it going to cost me? The whole experience. And Dr. Shoemaker, you, you've been in the hospitality industry in Vegas for a long time. You all have mastered this bundled payment model. I remember when I think Bob Stupak came out with yeah. this uh, package that he would sell where people was the first junket. Uh, yes, and I think that true. there's a lot that we could learn in the healthcare space from that. Yeah, there's tremendous. And, and it really comes down to, you know, from a, what we do as academics, we look at a lot at, at consumer behavior and consumers' willingness to pay. So what's my willingness to pay for certain c- procedures or certain products? And so I may not want to pay X... I may not want to pay a lot for my food. I'll pay more for my room. Well, so we bundle those two together and we get the customer to pay a little more for their, a little less for the room, a little more for their food, but it's a one price. And from a consumer's perspective, they say, okay, I have to spend this amount of money. Where am I, how am I going to spend it? Yeah. And, and I think the other thing where, where bundled payments, I think is the future is tell me when you want your procedure. I'll tell you how much that procedure costs. Tell me, when so tell me what you want to pay and i'll tell you when you can have that procedure so we'll start really focusing on the demand side of the equation to level out the demand for services a lot of these international countries this has been their selling point come on to costa rica and you could get your knee done for twenty two thousand dollars i think there's a lot that we could learn from the hotel and the hospitality industry to bring that in we've got some practitioners in town that are doing a great job at this they frankly have led uh, a lot of this discussion and dialogue around the country. I want to touch real quickly on the last one because we're getting close to come to an end. So clinical well, trials. Mm-hmm. Tell us about clinical trials. I know you, you've got a lot of experience in this space. Well, this is, I mean, this is really so exciting for Las Vegas because as we mentioned earlier, we see so many different people. We see so many different nationalities and different eth- ethnic backgrounds of people coming in that it becomes ideal. But the other thing that's really, so at UNLV, um, we're partnering with the Le- Lou Ruvo Center Mm-hmm. for brain health to really focus on clinical trials. We're do, working with SWITCH, which many people don't know, but UNLV, because of their partnership with SWITCH, we have one of the fastest supercomputers in the world, which allows us to cr- crunch massive amounts of dirt, data. We've actually created, Marty Schiller at UNLV has actually created the Institute for Personal Health Medicine. So lots mm-hmm. of, I mean, lots of exciting things. And that's really the future is, is clinical trials. And and very quickly, what makes the supercomputer so important is that we have massive and massive amounts of data collected over you know, 30 or 40 years of clinical trials. By being able to crunch all that data, it allows organizations to be much more efficient in terms of how they do their testing. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So I hate to do this. Our show is coming to an end. It goes by so fast. And uh, we've got two experts in the space of medical travel here, uh, health and wellness travel. And I want to thank the two of you for coming onto the show. And for our user audience, those that are watching, you're going to be able to go online to lasvegasheals.org and download this plan uh, sometime next week. So go on there, get a copy of the plan, take a look at it, figure out how you could get connected, how you could collaborate, and how you could help us build capacity. In the meantime, Join us next Friday, every Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning for another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, and thank you for taking part of your morning to be with us here today.